Hi again, this is Peter from the Ultimate WordPress Guide and in this video I'll show you how to create a multi-step form like this using PyotNet add-ons for Elementor. So let's get started. I'll start by creating a blank section on canvas. I'll set the view height to 100% and I'll give some background color to this just to allow the form to stand out a bit more. I think that's fine. Next, I'll drag the multi-step form widget onto the canvas. And here you'll see there are a couple of settings, none of which are important right now, but very importantly, the thing that I want to draw your attention to is this form ID field. When we start building these uh, multiple steps, it is important that each one of these steps has the same uh, form ID, uh, which is a requirement. And this will allow the templates that we'll create for each one of these steps to be associated with this multi-step form. Next, I'll head over to my WordPress dashboard to the templates menu and under the save templates area. This is where I'll create all of the templates required for each of the steps in the multi-step form. So I'll start by creating a new template. I'll select a section template and I'll call this step one and click create. I'm not gonna start from anything I'd like to start from scratch I'll just close down the template editor and I'll start by creating just a blank section over to the widgets panel I'll drag in the form field widget into this area and very importantly as I've mentioned before first and foremost I'll put in the form ID which I've set up on the multi form step widget just a moment ago so I'll go ahead and customize this field a little bit uh, get it to where I want it to be and then I'll duplicate it a couple of times I'll set that up as the name field. I'm happy with the fact that this is a text field I want to display a label that says full name. Do I want to show the label? Yes Do I want to have some placeholder text? Yes, let's put Jane Doe in there um, Do I want to add an icon? So an icon will just put a little icon next to the form field label but I'm going to leave that as is I do not want to auto complete this I want to make this a required field I'll leave the invalid message off uh, max length I'm okay with that um, nothing further to do here so I'll just save that next over to the style section here I want to just give it uh, a bit of styling um, so I'll set up the spacing between the label and the field I'll leave the text color as is I'll go ahead and change the Typography, I'll set that up to be Montserrat um, and I'll give that a size of 14. Onto the field settings, same here, I'll leave the text color as is. I'll go ahead and change the font settings here as well. Uh, background color is fine, input maximum width, that's okay. Here I can set this up to be sort of 50%, 100%, but I'll leave that at 100%. Input padding is fine, placeholder text, border radius. Yes, I do want to have a border around this. Just one pixel, I'll give it a five pixel border radius. Um, I'll set the border radius to something that is a little lighter, just like that. And then lastly, on the field, um, I just want to set up the typography size to be 13 pixels. I'll go ahead and save my changes. Next, what I'll do is I'll duplicate these columns to give me a two column layout and I'll duplicate these fields as well, just so that I have a few more within the section. So I'll go ahead now and update the rest of these. So I've got a full name. I have uh, an email address. So form ID again stays the same. I'll change that to email. Uh, I want to change that to an email field change that to email and let's say jane at example.com I don't want to display the icon pattern autocomplete is off should it be a required field yes um, and I think that's all next up I'll go over to this and I'll make that the phone number form I'll change that to a telephone number field we'll change the label to phone and we'll give it an example phone number autocomplete off required field invalid message etc etc I'll leave that as is and then the last form I'd like to make this a drop down field that shows me all of the countries so again multi-step form is the form ID 
I'll change that to country. Here I want to have a select or a drop down field. Um, I'll change the field label to country. Yes, I want to show the label. Uh, required field, yes. And in this section, here I'll copy and paste the country list. A little further down, if I wanted to set a default value, I can. So let's just fill that in as United Arab Emirates, because that's where I am. And that's it. I'm happy with the first template. I'll copy one of these fields so that I can reuse it again in the next template. So after I've done that, I'll head back over to my WordPress dashboard under the templates area and I'll go and create a new template. Here I'll select section again, we'll call that step two, create template. I'll create a new section. I'll drag the form field widget back in. Well, actually, no, I don't have to because I've copied that one. So I'll just paste that widget in. Okay, perfect. Um, in the second step, however, I don't want to use uh, sort of normal type fields. I'd like to use an image select field. So I'm going to select this here um, and I'll say this needs to be the destination field. And instead of a, sec uh, a text field, I'm going to choose the image select field. Um, we'll call that destination. Um, show the label. Well, in this instance, I don't want to show the label. We'll come back to that in just a moment. And then in terms of the options, um, if I go further down, here is where I can select uh, multiple images. So I'll go into my image library and I'll select these uh, four images of island destinations that I have. Um, you'll see that I've already populated the the uh, caption text of each of these. So we've got one for Maldives, one for Mauritius, one for Seychelles, and one for the Caribbean islands. I'm happy with these in the sequence that they are. I'll go ahead and insert this, uh, this image library. Um, next, under the options, this is where I also want to populate the options that I have. So we'll start with Maldives. You'll see as I type that in, that option comes up. Then we have Mauritius. Then we have uh, Seychelles, and lastly we have the Caribbean islands. Okay, perfect. Um, now that this option is in, you can see if I click on each of these options, let me just capitalize that. Uh, if I click on each of these options, you'll see that uh, the image select actually works. So I'll go ahead and do a bit of styling on this field. So under the style section, I'll use this form widget um, typography. Again, here I want to change that to Montserrat. Um, let's make that a little bigger. Perhaps let's make that 15 pixels. Um, text align. I want to align the text to the center. The item width, that's fine. Let's split this up into 25% to each to fit into that, uh, that space. Item border radius, item border radius, none there. Image border radius, input padding, nothing, nothing. I'm quite happy with these. Um, under the label area, uh, there's a couple of things that I can set up here. Not really necessary um, in terms of spacing because I don't have a label to display. So I'll just leave that uh, at 10 in case I want to display the label again later. The text color, I'm okay with the text color. Typography, that's set up to Montserrat. Um, in terms of the field settings, here I can set up the, uh, so we've got a border type, border width, border radius, um, all of that looks fine. I'll go ahead and click publish. Before I go, I just want to go back and switch on the title for this field because I do want to use it later. So I'll go back to the content area for this. Um, I want to show the label. And back to the style section, I'll go back into the label field again again here i'll maybe just change that to a value of let's say maybe uh, 35 um, i'll change the typography here we'll make that contrail um, i'll set that up to maybe let's say 24 um, and instead of destination under the content area here i'll say where do you want to go okay perfect i'll save that and move on for the last template, I'll head back over to my templates area, save templates, and I'll go and create one more template. I'll call this 
to step three and create the template and I'll create a new section. Now I've copied one of the fields from the uh, step one form, which I'll just go ahead and paste in this area. And again here, I want this to be a two column layout, so I'll just duplicate that. So I've got two uh, forms. So in this area, let me add uh, one more. So I'll just duplicate that field and then I'll duplicate the entire section because I want to have a full width uh, comment section or a message section below. So I'll just delete, I'll delete this section and I'll delete that field. Okay, perfect. So in this area is where I want to populate the number of adults, number of children, children age, um, and ask the visitor if he has or she has any special requirements. Okay, so I'll go back into the form. Um, here I'll change that field to adults. Um, and here I want to make that a select field. So that needs to be a drop down list as well. And here I'll say number of adults. Um, I can actually go and delete this field and just copy that one over. So we'll paste that. I'll go over here. We'll change that to the field ID of children. That's a select field. And I'll change that to number of children. Okay, so let's just go back, see if everything is set up. So I've got the form ID, form field, details and select field. Yes, I want to show the label is a required field. Yes. So here I need a couple of options. I'll just add in a few values. So I'll put each of them on a separate line. So let's just make the four options and I'll copy this and I'll go over to the children field and I'll paste them there. Uh, I want to have a default value as well. So for the children, let's make the default value there zero and back on the adults field. Let's at least make that two people. Okay, for the next one, which is the age of children. So age of children, I'll just create that as a normal text field. And I'll give the field a unique ID. Um, and in the placeholder area, here I'll just give them an example. So eight comma separated, 10, comma separated 16 for argument's sake so we'll just capture the values like this and then for the final field um, we'll use the message I want to make that a text area and here do you have any special requirements okay perfect placeholder text um, I'll leave that blank um, I'll make that a required field also um, and I won't give that a default value. Okay, perfect. So that is it for the three steps that I need. I'll go ahead and save my work. So now that I've created all the steps required for my multi-step form, I'm gonna go back to the page where I pasted the multi-step form widget earlier, and I'll just go ahead and refresh that. And as you can see at the moment, there is still nothing. Yeah, because that's because we haven't configured anything yet. I'm gonna head over to my templates dashboard so I'll go to my save templates and very importantly here I need you to take note of these template IDs yeah so that's step one step two step three um, and I'm gonna head and copy this one and I'll come back and copy each one of these individually because I'll have to paste them into the steps area okay so I'll go back here I'll say edit with Elementor just to bring up the content editor um, for my multi-step form and I'll select the multi-step form widget. So here you can see I have the ability to add some items. So item one, um, here I can give it a step title. So I'll call this uh, personal details and just spell details correctly. And then I'll paste the template ID in here. And here you can see already that's the step one and it populates the information from my form. Perfect. I'll create step two and that is uh, destination details. I'll go back to my templates and I'll copy that template ID, head back in here and paste. You'll see that the next one is populated. And lastly, I'll create a step called passenger uh, details. And same thing, go ahead, copy and paste the template ID in. Okay. 
Um, so now all that's left to do really here is to style this area up um, so that the form looks uh, nice and presentable. Um, so I'm, I'll go ahead and uh, fast forward the video and I'll do that now. Perfect. So let's take a look at what our form looks like on the front end. Okay, so let's populate the field and see if the form works as intended. So let's say Jane at example.com will give Jane a phone number. Um, country is fine. I'll click next. Perfect. Step one works. Step two, I'll select the destination. Love to go to Maldives. Let's click next. Number of adults, number of children. Let's say we've got three children um, and the ages are 10 and 20. Um, and here I'll just say not applicable. Uh, once that's done, I'll click submit and you'll get a message that the form was sent successfully. So just before we head out, uh, if you don't have PipeNet add-ons for Elementor already, let me tell you a little bit more about it. So as you can see, we just use the multi-step form widget, but under the form builder section, there are a number of fields that you can use, um, including fields for Stripe and PayPal payments, um, you know, form abandonment setup, integration with Slack, MailChimp, ActiveCampaign, and much more. Um, on the extension side, there are a couple of extensions available as well. Um, quite, quite an extensive plugin uh, for the price, and there's a couple of widgets as well. Um, and if you head over to the price area, you can see that it's really, really dirt cheap. Probably one of the cheapest plugins uh, available on the market today. Um, you know, price, price versus feature, um, and it's only you know less than a hundred dollars for unlimited sites for a lifetime license. Um, one-time payment, lifetime updates, lifetime support. So that is really pretty cool. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it useful or helpful, please let us know. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our channel, hit the bell for notifications, and stay tuned for more great content. I've put a few links to tools, services, and plugins that I use in the description below. These are affiliate links. So if you purchase a product, including PyatNet add-ons, through one of them, I will receive a commission at no additional cost to you, of course. I only endorse products that I have personally used and your support helps me put out more great content. So thanks. Bye for now.